Welcome to the Business Spotlight Series. My name is Kay Cote. I am your podcast host here in Action Coach in Central Texas. And today I've got Josh Helm, owner of Texas Best Construction. Today we're going to be talking about his business, his journey through business ownership, challenges, best practices, and share a sneak peek to what it's really like to build and operate a business. If this is your first time on our channel, be sure to like and subscribe to get notifications when we drop new conversations just like this one. Well, Josh, welcome and thank you so much for being here today. I'd love to get a little brief overview of your background and tell us about your business. Uh, thanks, Kay. I, you know, I'm Josh Helm, owner of Texas Best Construction in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex area, and we build a primarily barn dominium home construction is what we're known for and uniquely hybrid style uh, which is a mixture combination between steel and wood frame which kind of sets us apart a little bit from uh, some of the other but that's what uh, that's what we do here in the dallas fort worth area approximately a hundred mile build radius Wow, that is incredible. I'd like to deep dive into kind of what that looks like. How did you get started in this? And like, how did you choose entrepreneurship rather than working for somebody else? Oh, boy, do we ever choose this? Or is this chosen us? I mean, that's really the question. But uh, I think, uh, ultimately, um, I've had my hand at pursuing doing entrepreneur type work and uh, had uh, plenty of things that I'd tried to do out early on. And, and of course you regroup and you got to move on to what's making you money. But uh, I had a, a kind of a collective experience involved in doing like uh, insurance restoration work. Uh, I was doing a variety of that type of traveling work, uh, which led me to diversify the type of work that I do later as the 08 housing market changed some things for us. I started to diversify the type of work that I did, moving me into uh, doing the type of work more that we do today. Um, but primarily, I would say what made me make the switch to start Texas Best was really just realizing, okay, we'd kind of moved to a certain point to where, uh, you know, it was evident that if we wanted to do things to a certain particular uh, finishing abilities, it was going to be having full control over what we needed to do. So that was, I guess, what moved mm -hmm. us in that direction. Oh, that is really powerful and really cool that you kind of saw what was going on and you were able to take that information and create something out of it. So um, I'd like to hear kind of what does your current ownership look like right now? Are you as a sole founder or are there outside investors or partners? It's, uh, it's, it's, we're primarily a small business, my wife and I, uh, who are I guess, co-partners in this, uh, Brandy, and uh, we we do the day-to-day. -day. It's, you know, uh, family-owned and operated in that sense. A lot of our family does work with us. We've got uh, sisters, brother-in-laws, cousins. Uh, my son works with us now uh, as well. So I think for us, there it, 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 there is a lot of that close-knit structure. Uh, and, but when it comes to being responsible, I guess it's me and her. Oh, that is cool. I love to hear about a husband and wife team. That's awesome. And so kind of like, what does your role, like your specific role, what do you, what's your role in the business right now? Well, I, I like to tell everybody that I know uh, a little about a lot. So this is what keeps me moving on and uh, as well, you know, you have to kind of keep your your nose into everything as a business owner, just not in not in micromanagement ways, but being able to tell what's good, what's not, and uh, being able to make adjustments along the way if you need to. Uh, so that's, I think, really important for us. Uh, but my particular role and a lot of what I'm doing uh, is more facilitating, like on the front end, I will be meeting with our clients, uh, looking at the property, setting maybe locations up as to where our house placement's going to go when it comes to our build style and looking for any potential problems that there might be at that time. 
when it comes mm-hmm. to finding a good place to build a home. And then, of course, I'm the face and, and out there promoting and, and doing the things when it comes to our social media presence and some of those things as well. But uh, I also build the pad site. So like, you know, we, we bring out equipment and put all that work together. So a little bit of time on the tractor or the kid steer is probably where I like to spend a lot of time. Yes. It sounds like it's a multifaceted role, like many, many business owners. And Mm -hmm. it's a, it's really cool to hear that. And I kind of like to dig in a little deeper, how, like, if you had to break down your hours, how many of those hours do you spend working on kind of like the job of the business and how much would it be like on that strategy, planning, marketing, all of the, all of the internal stuff? Oh, I I would say that it's a, it's a pedal to the metal pretty much every day on strategy uh, because when you're not doing something physical, your mind is moving and you're thinking, what do I need to be doing? Oh, Mm -hmm. what are we, what do we need to be doing here? And how are you going to change that strategy? Uh, And, you know, I think for today's market and the way businesses work uh, for us, we're not only a construction business, but we've become a media business in that sense to where uh, we are constantly sharing ideas as well as, uh, you know, our knowledge base uh, as far as best practices and things like that. So there's plenty to do, you know, on a daily <laughs> basis when when I'm not doing something that's directly for the company, we're doing something that's promotional in in regards to um, making a short for a YouTube channel or or something on Instagram or trying to have some kind of context that we can put out there to share mm-hmm. for for our follower base because we're not just a construction company, but we also share best practices and we help to influence the market when it comes to the barn mini. Oh, that is really cool, which is kind of leads me into my next question, you know. This kind of goes into like what makes your business special, what makes it unique and um, like who primarily does your business serve? Like if I were in your audience, how would I know I'd be a good fit for for one of your homes? Sure. Uh, So, you know, our our primary customer is is those that are looking to buy into something that maybe is a little bit different than the norm from the whatever the old hat was. Uh, you know, uh, the Barnuminium has become such a trend for reasons such as flexible design, uh, reasons such as energy efficiency, uh, for durability, for low maintenance. You know, mm-hmm. some of these things, people that fall in those categories, maybe you're looking to retire or maybe an early couple who is looking to establish and maybe buy a place that they don't have to have a lot of worry. It really fits the mold for a lot of people. Uh, like hobbyists, people who are looking to uh, be maybe a, maybe they're a car mechanic or maybe they're just a, a car hobbyist where they're looking for a large shop, an open design where they could have it all under one roof. Uh, yeah. So these are some big aspects of why people like choose us. Uh, mm-hmm. One of the things that's unique too for us is our hybrid style of build because we've really taken every aspect of building a Barnuminium and made it purposeful for uh, intent to where we're not just throwing a metal building up and putting a house on the inside. Ours is designed that way from the start, meaning that we've got better wall systems and flashings and all those things that align mm-hmm. with having a home inside of a metal structure. Hmm, That is really cool. I have like done some studying on the concept and I think it's incredible what like the it's the flexibility that it really offers yeah Yeah, there's no load bearing walls so Mm -hmm. like all of your main load is ran on the perimeter of the exterior of the Mm -hmm. home meaning that you could pretty much do your layout any way you wanted on the interior so that's cool yeah and kind of looking at like how would your competitors compare with you Competitors, I think, uh, you know, we, we don't really look at it like we're in competition with somebody else as much as uh, we're looking to help hopefully influence other people to build more of our style because mm-hmm. we feel like uh, we owe it to the, the, the barn dominium industry as a whole because it's given us so much when it comes to 
uh, the trend and uh, the popularity of these homes that we really choose a good method and business and, and strategy to put these things together. So for me, it's not like we're against the other guy and those kind of things when it comes to competitively. Of course, you always have your, oh, you know, your your edge, right? You're trying to be uh, out there. But <clears throat> in terms of uh, pricing and standpoints on that end, it's not so much in a, a competitive over, you know, who can be the cheapest in, in that sense. But more of a, more of a, uh, a term of how can we help promote everybody to do this correctly? Because I think some of our competitors or cohorts or however you want to say it, people on the other side of the aisle are not building maybe with the intent the way that we do, which mm -hmm. are some, there are some distinctive differences in styles of build. You've got your post frame barnuminium, which is all wood construction, uh, which is predominantly done more in the mid uh, west to northern areas. Uh, you know, and then here in Texas, it's predominantly more steel frame construction where uh, I'm at and a lot of people in our area do it differently as well. But there are different ways, many different ways uh, to try to accomplish building uh, a Barnuminium home. Hmm. That's really cool to learn about. And it kind of goes in perfectly into the next topic of marketing, which is <laughs> always one of those things that's there. And it's, you know, hearing about your business and hearing about what you do has been really insightful. So I'd love to hear your kind of, I'm curious about what um, kind of what you're doing for your marketing. And so what was a, what are some of the strategies that you're using right now? Well, I think uh, marketing has been a focal point for us. To me, I, I don't think anybody that's in business today uh, I look at it like this: if you if you have an airplane but no pilot, it's 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 pretty having an an airplane with no pilot is like having a business with no marketing, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Mm -hmm. Like the marketing side of it today, uh, for for so much has changed. Uh, you know, I was I've been around long enough to to know what it's like to market where you have to pay for every piece of mail you put in somebody's mm -hmm. hand, uh, and I know that you know, spending fifteen, twenty thousand dollars on a marketing campaign uh, and what that pressure is like, as opposed to now you've got social media, you've got all these aspects of it where it really doesn't cost you anything, you know, to put your name out there and to put your stuff out there. So for us, uh, you know, we love the the ability to be able to share uh, our knowledge as well as to, uh, I feel like, be an industry leader so that we can help, you know, keep things at a certain standard. Uh, this has been a huge thing for us. So the marketing side of it for us is not so much salesy. We're not trying to sell necessarily mm -hmm. every time we, we're we uh, putting something out. But on the marketing aspect has been a huge thing. That's probably 90% of our business somehow, some way stems from uh, social media. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. So that's been kind of the trending lately. And, um, is there a specific social media that you feel has brought you the most business or is it kind of across like the gamut? Uh, we kind of, we kind of look at it like it, it's a collective effort. You need to be yeah. everywhere. Uh, I, I kind of follow the Gary V, uh, a mindset of the, uh, attention is the new currency, you know? So mm -hmm. where are the people at? That's where we want to be. We want to be there having that conversation about Barnuminiums. And uh, YouTube has primarily primarily been a good platform for us. Uh, it's, it's definitely been the easiest monetized platform to get mm -hmm. started. And we've had a tremendous amount of success on our YouTube channel, as well as uh, Facebook and uh, Instagram uh, we're on TikTok and and pretty much like I said anywhere anywhere the conversation conversation is going uh, that's mm -hmm. where we want to be. That is awesome and kind of like diving into a little bit about you. Um, you know, as you look back on this journey so far, what has been a memorable roadblock or hurdle or something you were challenged with that you overcame? Well. That's got to be an easy question for anybody who, especially in the construction business, uh, went through the last few years of construction. 
Um, but I, I would say the, the pandemic uh, after during the COVID season for us was one of the most critical times of our business. Like we, we had the most people coming in the door, more people wanted to build a Barnum Indian during that season. Mm -hmm. Not only was our channel quadrupling in size and all the stuff, the business itself uh, was doing the same. So we were challenged during that season, not only to be scaling and to be purchasing equipment uh, to advance and to be able to not, I mean, to, to not, to not be completely out of pocket with a lot of these, these expenses uh, mm -hmm. we had to buy, we had to buy equipment uh, as well as we're not just a construction company. We're a logistical company. We have to haul our own materials a lot of times because mm -hmm. we're traveling like 80 to a hundred miles. Uh, so, which means flatbed trailers and CDL mm -hmm. drivers and trucks. And, uh, and we also have our own dumpster uh, uh, bins. Like we have like 20, dumpster containers where, you know, we have to be able to manage and, and haul all that stuff. So this has been, I think, things that I never considered that we were going to have to do, Yeah. Uh, you know, in, in, in terms of construction and, and building a home, you got all the challenges of doing all that, but then you have to add this to it, which means, you know, being versatile to, to handle the problems that are at hand. But I would say the biggest challenge during that season was, uh, the cost, the rising cost of construction. And, you know, we had already a lot of, of pre-planned builds that were coming. Uh, we had a lot more jobs than we probably felt comfortable with having at that season as well, which yeah. meant, which meant we had to get to the grind to make it all happen while the carpet's being pulled out from under you because your cost and all that stuff, all the market changed and, and, and rose tremendously. So yeah. we're glad to be, we're glad to be on this side of that season. <laughs> oh, a hundred percent, you know, kind of, and that goes right into looking at what's next. What do you have planned for the next three to five years? I would say our, our agenda moving forward is, is to, is to do better, is to uh, be more efficient with our build times to provide better service. This is constantly our effort. Uh, which has always continuously been that way, but we, you know, we, we, we've proven we can finish these projects. We just want to finish them a little bit quicker uh, and a little more efficiently. Uh, that's always the challenge of any, anybody's business is to how can we be more efficient? But uh, I think also, you know, we're, we're looking to continue our efforts uh, in the, in the overstretch of the market, because we have such a widespread reach uh, really all over the, the, the country, people who look to us for answers about Barnum uh, mm -hmm. we would like to partake in some of the market share that we have there, uh, meaning providing plans. These are some of the things that we've started to do here currently uh, to help maybe facilitate others who want to build our style of build in other, mm -hmm. in other states all across the country, because we, we really feel like, our hybrid style of construction is unique in the sense that it should be duplicated. So. Yeah. That's really incredible goals. And, you know, thinking about goals too, what's your personal approach to goal setting within your business? How, and like how many goals do you set at a time or how do you make your goals happen? I think you just aim in a direction and start heading there. That's really <laughs> that's really, that's really my goals. Uh, you know, when we, you know, Kay, when we set out to start this business, let me tell you, uh, it wasn't anything strategic about getting to the point where we're at now. Um, I told my wife, I said, look, we'll paint a few houses. We'll build some fences. You know, we're just going to do the little things and, and see where that takes us. And, and so it's definitely grown to, a whole lot more than that. A lot of things that we didn't really plan for. Mm -hmm. So what I've found is just, I think, trying to do the best, put our best foot forward each and every day to accomplish what we've been given uh, and to be good stewards with that. And more is going to come. Like, I'm not worried about reaching certain goals of 
certain things. Obviously, we want to see an increase, right? Everybody wants to see an increase, but there's certain things that aren't practical for maybe more business or it's really about deciding like how much of your life do you want to give to this? You know? Mm -hmm. Uh, So for us, like we, we want to be able to reach some of these outer perimeters and hopefully we'll be able to increase some of our reach at some point in time. Uh, But I'd say in the next three to five years, uh, you're going to find us doing a lot of what we've been doing, but probably more education, more teaching, more, um, engineering, uh, more purposefully showing, you know, our methods as well as documenting and, and, uh, our YouTube channel, all of these efforts that we've put into that. I think it's going to be even more so like, I feel like we've only scratched the surface of what we could do in those, in those regards. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's incredible. It's been so fun learning about your journey. And I'd love to kind of dive into some rapid fire questions. Top of mind. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. These are just those little top of mind answers. Um, We've got four of them. So are you ready? Okay, let's do it. (laughs) All right, Josh. First question is, what is the key to success for you? The key to success, uh, obviously, is, is, is keep going don't quit. And I think not being afraid to fail is the key to success for us. Uh, And being vulnerable as well in your efforts of what you're doing uh, and being confident. I mean, there's so many things, but for me, it's, it's all of those. Those are really great. Next question is what is one piece of advice you have for other business owners? Well, uh, all of the things that I just mentioned in the first deal, but I'd say advice is, uh, is being, is, is being willing to do the things that nobody else is going to do and realize that nobody else is coming to do them. So, and being patient with the process because, uh, you know, it's not going to happen overnight. It's something that you got to, put one foot in front of the other before you're going to get to your journey. And for us, that's, that's the way it's been. And if it does happen instantly, you're probably not prepared for it. So. Yeah, that's really good too. Uh, Third question is what is one book or like a piece of content could be a podcast, anything that you're reading uh, or have read recently? Yeah, I I don't read a lot of books more. So I do get inspired watching uh, you know, it really just depends on the, on the direction uh, of inspiration that you're looking for. Um, you know, I gain inspiration at our local church, you know, probably more than I do anywhere else. But my, uh, you know, I, I do I subscribe to Gary V. I listen to him when it comes to media marketing. And I think business strategy, uh, just having the right mentality when it comes to media. Uh, but which, like I said, has been a big aspect of our business. Um, as well as um, just being inspired by other people who are out doing. And I, mm-hmm. I don't have any any direct thing that I would point to on that. I, I do like to f- follow uh, when it comes to um, knowledge-based people. You know, I like watching like Matt Reisinger and some of these folks like that. But, you know, content creators um, who are giving information uh, one thing that uh, I heard recently is somebody say is that you need to share your secrets and sell the implementation. I think that's something I've been kind of thinking on, you know, really focused on. Mm. But That's a good one. I like that one too. And our final question is, if you had to choose only one area of your business that you could immediately improve tomorrow, what would it be? Uh. I would say just, I think the quickness of being able to turn over a project, you know, these are the things that we're constantly working on, how we can expedite the process for clients, because that, you know, that, that everybody wants what they want and they want it now. But I think improving that as well as the communication on that end uh, is always going to be our number one. 
Well, those were fun, rapid fire questions. And before we get to the <laughs> final question today, um, how can people get in touch with you, learn about your company and connect with you online? Well, uh, if uh, we're Texas Best Construction or Texas Best Barnuminium, you could pretty much search anywhere. You'll find us on uh, Google. You'll find us on Instagram. You'll find us on Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, TikTok. Uh, I don't know if I didn't say one or the other. Facebook, <laughs> all of them. You'll find us on all the socials. But uh, I think learning more about us, you could visit. Uh, we have some direct links. You could go to our link tree at linktree.com forward slash Texas Best Construction, uh, mm -hmm. where you can find our Barndo cost calculator, as well as uh, learn about our resources when it comes to radius and, um, of course, access all of our YouTube inspiration when it comes to our final tour videos on Barnuminiums and, and, and everything that there is to come from there. So really a lot to share. So. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, Josh. So our final question for today is what is most inspiring to you today? Oh, what is most inspiring? I think my, my family, you know, I get, I get, uh, encouraged about seeing the, the kids grow up. We, we have four kids and, uh, we've got a lot of, uh, you know, seeing them mature and to, to achieve things in their own, you know, obviously this is a huge part, obviously what drives us as well for our business to make sure we're creating a place where if they wanted to choose to be to be under the wings of this business, this would be a great opportunity for them to do that. But, you know, seeing them perform and, and do the things that they're doing uh, as well, I think is inspiring, um, as well as our team, I think, for Texas Best in, in general, to be able to go out day to day and perform. And then when we get to the end of the project, us stand there and behold it, and to be able to share it with so many others who are all inspired of the work that we do. I think this is some of our most inspirational um, feelings that we have, you know, finishing a project. Oh, well, thank you so much, Josh. It has been an absolute joy having this conversation with you today and having you on the show. Thank you, Kay. Appreciate the time. <laughs>